Hey everybody, it is Wednesday night and that means it is time for another episode of Craft Root Sports, home of the drunkest sports takes on the net. I am Mike, hanging out with me as always is Scott. Scott, how you feeling tonight? Better than last week. We might have baseball, Mike. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great uh, it, for the same reasons. Although we are also going to be missing out on some baseball, which we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, one of Scott and I's favorite tournaments is canceled. And we figured since there is some baseball news to talk about, we decided to bring on uh, one of my favorite people to talk baseball with. Uh, this is a stand-up comedian from Cincinnati. His debut album, Drinking at the Kids Table, launches May 15th, available for pre-order right now, hanging out with us this week. Billy DeVore. Billy, how you feeling, bud? I'm good. How are you? Oh, great, man. Like my cat wants to be on, too. <laughs> <laughs> this is like every work Zoom meeting at this point. Like, all we need is somebody to be like, uh, can you hear me? Oh, speaking of that, Drew's muted. We muted Drew until he finishes watching the Jordan doc. He is not allowed to participate, so... Hey, Drew, we'll talk to you later, I guess. <laughs> uh, Billy, thanks for hanging out with us, man. I'm super pumped that you're, uh, you're on, man. Dude thanks, dude, thanks for having me. Also, how do you not watch the Jordan doc? What else are you doing on Sunday nights? It's a great question, and we don't know, and that's why Drew Being is, uh, he's got a time. <laughs> he's I got feel it. that. <laughs> Uh, he is under timeout for that, so we will, uh, we'll talk Jordan doc later on. We've also got some, uh, some basketball-ish type story. I want to talk about some NCAA stuff that I saw come out this week as well. Uh, and we're going to talk, uh, obviously, all of this baseball news. Get to all of that here shortly. But before we do any of that, as always, we want to start off with the beer that we are drinking tonight as I vamp and find the sound cues. <laughs> This is First Pour brought to you by Dugout Mugs. Listen, everybody, if you want to drink out of a baseball bat just like we do here on Craft Root Sports, head on over to dugoutmugs.com slash craft. You will get 15% off your entire order. You can drink out of a bat. You can open up your beers with a baseball. It is one of the greatest companies that I've ever seen in my life. Hit them up, dugoutmugs.com slash craft for 15% off of your order. This week's beer uh, is one that I wasn't anticipating until Scott was like, wait, I don't have the one you talked about earlier. So we had to switch <laughs> at the last minute. <laughs> this is Batisserie Neapolitan. I don't know if I'm saying the first word right. It's pretty French uh, and I'm, I don't speak French. Anybody speak French? Billy? Mm -mm. Scott? You get, no. no? Okay, cool. Well, we're going to go with it. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why do I know you don't? I mean... I barely speak Spanish, so I know oh. you know I don't speak French. Okay, well that's that was a weird flex. Okay, cool. Uh, anyways, this one's from <laughs> Energy. <C> <laughs> this is from Energy City Brewing in Batavia, Illinois. It's a 10% ABV Imperial Stout. Here's what Tavor had to say about this one. They said it's made with real cocoa, lactose, strawberries, and vanilla beans for a quote creamy, fudgy, berry-drenched deliciousness. The ratings uh, would seem to agree 4.17 caps on untapped. Scott, have you had a chance to taste this one yet? Yes, and it tasted it tastes exactly like melted Neapolitan, which is exactly what I was looking for. Consume. <laughs> <laughs> but also, most importantly, I said that this represented the, the new threesome with uh, Drew being white, uh, you being the redhead, and me being black-ish. So we're all represented in this beer. Also, at various points during the year, my skin is very pink, so I feel like that's even better. That, See, that's there an you even go. better way to do it. <laughs> By the way, Neapolitan ice cream, where, I mean, do you guys start at the chocolate and then work your way to the strawberry, or do you start at the strawberry and go the other way? Eat strawberry, chocolate, and then I guess vanilla, if it's still left, I'll eat it just to not throw it away. Billy, do you go, uh, do you go strawberry, then chocolate, then vanilla? That seems very, uh, that's, that's way too much for me, I think. I, uh, I start with it by putting it in the trash and then getting a better ice cream. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The only reason I have Neapolitan is a kid's birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forget what comic has the joke. Uh, was it Moses Storm? He has a joke where he's like, my mom would buy the giant jugs of the Neapolitan ice cream just so we could eat it. Then she could use the jug as a bucket for a mop later, <laughs> knowing that the ice cream itself was cheaper than buying an actual mop bucket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Neapolitan getting all the hate. If you guys uh, chime in in the chat, let us know what you think of Neapolitan ice cream, because uh, I don't hate it. It's all right. It's still it's ice cream. It's just an ice cream. I mean, it, the, there's nothing special about it. Nobody has ever gone anywhere and said, man, I got to get Neapolitan here. That's got to be the flavor. <laughs> like, it's just a flavor. 
It's uh, just three flavors of that being like, ah, what can yeah. I get that's cheapest and heck, can I get to feed a bunch of little kids? <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't offend anyone. No. Uh, pardon the punctuation hanging out with us. They're saying, what's up, homies? Shout out to Pardon the Punctuation, a fellow uh, Cincinnati sports podcast. Uh, shout out to them chiming in. And uh, somebody is just showing up as Facebook user. I don't know uh, who that is, but it says all three of the Neapolitan flavors at the same time is the only way to go. Uh, WTF That's true. is I mean, the matter. If with I you guys. do eat it, I'm just going to get a scoop of all of them because uh, it's too much work to just do one. That's fair. Uh, this is First Pour brought to you by Dugout Mugs. Again, dugoutmugs.com slash craft for 15% off your entire order. All right, uh, let's talk with Billy here. Billy, uh, besides being a stand-up comedian, is also the uh, one of the co-hosts of the new Nasty Boys podcast, which is a, a Reds-themed podcast. Uh, how did that come about, Billy? How did you guys come up with the idea for the new Nasty Boys? So we came up with it when uh, Alex Stone and Sam Evans passed down uh, F.U. We Like the Bengals to myself, Rand, Andrew Rudick, and uh, we were like, I was and Lee Kimbrell. We're just we're doing it. And I'm like I, I'm not I'm a football fan, but not enough to be sitting and writing burns for 16 straight weeks and covering the Bengals because it's just a shit show. So I was like, you know what? Um, let's just do baseball. I was like, let's just go off on a tangent. Lee's a huge baseball fan. I was like, this just makes sense. And there isn't any like most like most baseball podcasts, kind of boring, a little dry. There aren't many comedians doing baseball. It's podcasts. like the sport. Yeah, exactly. Okay, all right, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 no, you're right. It's and uh, we 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 spice it up just like Mr. Redlegs at the ballpark. You know, bring a little flair. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, it's, so that's where it came about. I mean, it, we uh, Alex and Sam laid the groundwork for us, and we just kept running with it. Because you did do uh, Fe, we we like the Bengals for a while there too, as well, and you have since handed that one down. Yeah, I gave that to uh, baby boy Alex Schubert because there was a point where baseball and football there's like a two-month period where they're still going on um well actually it's the reds so there's a one-month period (laughs) (laughs) where it's going on so uh, i was like this is too much work because we look you you look and you write jokes for both podcasts and you're spending plus studio time you're doing 20 25 hours a week of podcasting with the writing so i was like "Mm -mm, i'm done Mm -mm, too much well, so, let's hang on. Let's preface that you're doing 20 to 25 minutes of free podcasting like that. If you were making no, no, no. money, you'd be on board, right? Yeah. 20 to 25 hours of work <laughs> on this stuff because you're writing these burns and you're just looking at all these pictures. Like, I don't know how many times I can say dude with dreads looks like Predator. Like, I just don't know. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm very tired. <laughs> uh, you have your first album coming out, uh, mm-hmm. Drinking at the Kids Table. It's available May 15th. Pre-order now on all digital platforms. Tell us a little bit about this album, ma'am. Uh, how long ago did you record this one? Because everything's shut down now. Yeah, I recorded it with a studio audience in my apartment a couple weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> it's just my cats and my wife just heckling me the whole time. So it was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually recorded it June of last year. I set a goal for myself. I said, before I turn 30, I either want to move or I want to record an album. And I still live in Cincinnati. So uh, I did that. And like, you know, I did it all myself. I, I found that uh, my buddies hooked me up with an engineer who helped me just record and do it. And then I'm putting it all out myself. No label, no nothing. Just doing it all on the ground, baby. Making it happen. It, did you have any second thoughts about like once everything hit, like eh, maybe I'll just shelf this for now and come back to it when I can actually do a show and promote it? Uh, no, because I'd had it shelved and I was like, you know what? There's no better time than now to put something out because then everyone <laughs> will listen to it and there's no excuse for them being like, oh, no, I haven't checked it out. I've been busy. I'm like, no, you haven't. You're in sweatpants <laughs> watching the third season of Ozark. I know what you're doing because I did that. <laughs> Two episodes in, guilty as charged. <laughs> oh, I fin- I finished that in a weekend. It was, a dude. Lot. That's a fantastic show, man. Without sports around, having Ozark. Oh, that's. I'm mad. I got through that one so quick. Me too, because I think that was the best season of television I've ever watched. It's yeah, that third season was really good. Uh, yeah. What's life been like, man, as a a comedian that's not able to perform? Well, it's been 64 days since I've done stand up comedy, which is the longest <sighs> I've ever gone in nine years. Before that, the record was seven days, so um, <laughs> sucks <laughs> a lot. Uh, luckily, I have like I've been you know doing press for this kind of stuff, and uh, 
just been getting on podcasts and doing interviews and stuff. So it kind of scratches the itch. And then there's Instagram shows where you're like talking with one person, you're telling them your jokes. And I'm like, you don't care. And then you look in the comments and it's just like cry, laugh, emoji face. I'm like, this is not the same. This sucks. I really, I don't like this. I really hate this. So it takes the fun out of doing it, but it's something to do, but it just, it's just with that and baseball being gone. I'm like, I think I don't have a personality anymore. I think it's just gone. I don't have anything to do. So it's, it's been really tough. Um, my wife is tired of me running bits fire. So she's really sick of it. <laughs> like just so sick of it. Just so mad. When I, all the COVID jokes, yeah. that he gets back. <laughs> Oh, Todd Berry tweeted. I swear to God, we all need to make a pact. Now. No one do COVID jokes. Seriously. <laughs> It'll get old in a hurry. Yeah. I'm not doing that. I'm good. I'll just save those jokes for the live stream. And then once we can see people again, I'll just make fun of them. So. That's the way to do it. There you go. Um, all right. So you're doing all these shows. Yeah. What What's your plan? Let me let me ask it this way. What do you think uh, stand up comedy is going to look like once everything opens back up? Because there's all these this talk about people are going to be too afraid to to go out and things are going to take a while to return back to normal. Once things do open up, uh, you know, how much do you think this is really going to impact those shows? Are you Are you ever going to see a, a 500 seat show again? You will. We'll need a vaccine, but I think, you know, just because of what DeWine has put out, uh, saying, like, entertainment's the last thing that comes back. Like, even when you go to a bar, they're they're closing the pinball machines. So there's, like, no way we're going to get back anytime, like, in a normal capacity anytime soon. I think a safe bet to see, like, Go Bananas reopen would be, like, July, like, late, maybe late July, August. Um, Funny Bones, you know, like, the one here is so big, like, and they ticket it like, you know, they need 300 people to make make their money back on how big the headliners are that they book. So maybe they're even later. Like, I just you just can't predict it until we get a vaccine, because then just that's when people really want to get back together and stand and sit next to each other and cough in each other's faces. <laughs> back up real quick. I got to say, if I make it all the way to when you can, you know, do entertainment and everything's kind of back to normal. And I get COVID from a pinball machine of all things. <laughs> I'm gonna be livid. That'd be the worst possible way to get COVID after all of this. Like, yeah, I got COVID from a pinball machine. I haven't played pinball in like 15 years, but it got me. It was so alluring. I couldn't yeah. help myself, and there it was, laced with COVID. Yeah, if it wasn't for that NASCAR pinball machine, I wouldn't get the coffees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drinking at the kids table available may 15th uh again pre-order you can pre-order it right now on all the digital platforms uh google play itunes uh you've got it on amazon right billy yeah i've got it on i've even got it on napster <laughs> I'm, when they were like giving me a list of things to check i'm like i'm putting it everywhere i think this is hilarious <laughs> You'll be why aren't we on napster i don't know man i need to start can we get I on blame Lime Mars? Mars? Can we get on LimeWire? That's that was my jam was LimeWire. Dude, Ooh, I even yeah, I once went, Lars got it shut down, LimeWire was the tip. Yep. Dude, I used BearShare. That was my jam. BearShare. Bear Ooh, that yeah, sounds like that. A, that was at the very end of that whole thing, I think. Yeah, BearShare where all the good movies were mislabeled. <laughs> <laughs> like, why is Straight there a dog? To the Scott stuff folder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no uh, mention of dog having to be in this why is he okay i gotta turn this off <laughs> uh, well billy is gonna be hanging out with us all episode long if you guys got any questions you got for billy uh be sure to drop them in the chat below also be sure to share out the show help us out make sure it gets in front of as many people as uh physically possible i want to talk about this world baseball classic being suspended because this was the news this week that almost broke me when I saw that the World Baseball Classic, and it, I think what bugged me the most, Scott, was that just recently you said on this show, hey, if it gets if it gets canceled, who cares? We go down as the winners, and we don't ever have to play it again, and at least we, we ended it on the champs. And I feel like you freaking drink, you jinxed it, dude. I did, and I, you know what? I I remember thinking that immediately when I saw that, and I'm like, but that's not actually cool. I'm actually upset about this. And I text you and, and Matt Barr from 4th and Gold because – we're like the only three people that I know that care about uh, the World Baseball Classic <laughs> like we do. And it's just like, this is devastating. And, and now I'm mad. COVID is really starting to uh, affect my life. It, it has until this moment with the World Baseball Classic getting canceled. Uh, now they've got to find a vaccine. This is getting serious. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Billy, were you crushed to find out that that was uh, that that was canceled? I mean, it's it's definitely a fun distraction. It's definitely a better to watch that than spring training. But I wasn't devastated knowing like everything's getting canceled. It was just a matter of time. But it, it's it sucks. Don't get me wrong, it sucks. But it wasn't like you know like it is now not having a major league season. But what's so frustrating about it is they announced that that it's like, hey, World Baseball Classic canceled, may not be played until 2023, and then that afternoon they were like. The owners in the major league teams have come up with a proposal and MLB games could start in July. I'm like, what the hell then? Why do we cancel the World Baseball Classic for next year already, knowing that we could have baseball as of the 4th of July weekend? Like, that's because, the, that's insanely it, frustrating. It's because no one knows what they're doing. This is all flying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> that's literally it. You know what? I've never been happier to be taking shots in the, the chat, though, because... Javi immediately called me out because he he likes the World Baseball Classic, Puerto Rico fan, and Greg from Sports Stance said he's a huge World Baseball Classic guy. I'm I'm glad there's more of us. I just I only remember during World Baseball Classic this last time around texting Mike and everybody else being like, "Shut up, we don't care." So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know, I'm only going off what I know. Like nobody else liked it. That's very true. Around. Some of those some of those uh, <laughs> USA comebacks, we were going fast and furious in Facebook comments, and it was just us back and forth. And maybe Patrick Wright, uh, he was the only other one that would chime and, in every once in a while and that was before i started my ludicrous two o'clock in the morning work schedule so i was up you know until the wee hours of the morning watching those games i i, I had no shame about it i and i would still do it even <laughs> having to get up at two in the morning World Bowl baseball classic comes back around i'm in uh billy what is it about the the wbc that you don't necessarily how can you not get hyped for that um man uh, I, I can't explain it. I just, I, I just never really got into it. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I turn it on just like how I turn on Korean baseball. Now it's like, Oh, this is baseball. It's happening. But I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for the real, I'm re looking for the real meat, baby. See, I, I want, I got to be honest. I heard a take about Korean baseball this week that I never really thought of. Uh, Cause I was super jazzed when that, when they launched that uh, and ESPN took over the rights and it was like, Oh, we're going to see live baseball. It's going to be real. It's going to be happening. But they also put it on at either 1 a.m. or, or 5.30 in the morning. Uh, nobody's watching it live. They don't do any replays during the day. It's a, it's If you don't catch it then or DVR it, you're not seeing it. Which so, is really weird. Uh, it's very they do weird. Re they do replays at 2.30 on ESPN2. 2.30 in the afternoon? Yep. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. Yep. I'm usually drunk by then. Uh, <laughs> but somebody said that this was basically ESPN being like, let's test out how we can do this remotely. Like, let's have our announcers be remote and we're going to broadcast something. And who cares? It's four o'clock in the morning. Nobody's watching anyways. So let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. And worst case scenario, we'll work out the kinks for when MLB finally comes back. That makes sense. But I, uh, I mean, that makes sense. And that's how you're going to have to do it. I think for the whole major league season, but the chemistry between like, like, you know, like with uh, Eduardo and uh, Shambi is just not good because they end up talking over each other and there's still a little bit of a delay, no matter what you're using. Like that's just, that's just inevitable. So well, then we've got it locked down. I mean, we've been perfecting this for a few <laughs> weeks now. I feel like they should outsource this. Me and Mike can do a, a few of the games. I mean, who, who cares about like the Marlins and the diamond decks? Let us call the game. <laughs> Dude, we've thought about that. Like my buddies at neighbor that ran neighborhood play, they're like, "Why have they not called us to do Thanksgiving like on fifteen thirty? Like that, <laughs> we could fill the time. Why not? Like all of us could just run fifteen thirty on holidays." I feel like yeah, if any holiday we could. Uh, uh, anybody who does a podcast could handle it. That's the funniest thing to me about this whole thing is like you hear these shows on ESPN struggling. Like I listen to Levitard every day, and it sounds like the worst garbage podcast I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, how does it like, they don't have this figured out that you could do this remote at this point. Like I thought Man, they let Mike and Mike do those late Monday night games. Uh, you know, when they had the, the dual Monday night games to start the season. <laughs> I mean, if those two clowns can do it, then anybody can really, I mean, that was, that was the testing right then. And that was what, five years ago that they did that. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Jim is asleep. Sorry, JB. Uh, there's no hockey news to talk about, bud. It's not my fault that your sport isn't doing jack right now. And Greg says if bat flips enter the WBC, it would be the ultimate form of baseball. I wholeheartedly agree. That's the only thing missing from the World Baseball Classic is bat flips. But it's got everything else. I mean, we talked about that before. Right? It's, like it's got everything else baseball is supposed to be. <laughs> Guys greeting everybody at home, played off the home runs, and you know, just them celebrating like it's Little League. I mean, it's, it's great. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like all the all the guys are standing up on the steps or up on the rails, you know, and they're jumping over if there's any type of you know last minute shenanigans. I, I mean, it feels like little league with grown men, and that's what we all. If baseball was like that, there'd be less people who say, "Eh, hey, it's so boring." Yeah. Agreed. A hundred percent. Well, let's talk about this proposal for baseball to come back. Uh, Javi was mentioning it in the comments a little bit earlier. The big thing that, that was floated in this proposal, universal DH, uh, but basically an 82 game season starting around the 4th of July, no fans in the stands. They're expanding the rosters. They're allowing like 30 bench players. It's all going to be divisional games plus the possibility of interleague play, but it'll be like AL central versus NL central, AL East versus NL East uh, though, th- to limit the travel. Uh, but they'll, it'll be baseball in the home stadiums. You won't necessarily have to worry about sequestering everybody in Arizona, even though Arizona was like, hey, come play here. Everybody can play. We'll let all the – everybody can come here. Please come to <laughs> – it's Arizona. We're fun. Uh, <laughs> but the big sticking point, and, and now it almost feels like it was set up this way because now everybody's on board with this. They want this to happen, and it's going to the players, and the Players Association is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're saying a 50-50 revenue split, so you're basically putting in a salary cap. Eh, I don't know if that's such a good idea. We're the ones putting our bodies on the line for this, and now it's going to turn the public against the players at this point. Like We've seen this happen so many times in labor disputes with these owners and players that now I think we're, we're going to see it in baseball. People are going to turn on the players if the players turn this down in any way. Oh, 100%. I mean, that's the big thing. Once they figure out that 50-50 split, because, I mean, when you read Pazin's article about it, like, they're going to lose probably, what, $3 billion in revenue just from not having that stuff, or, like, just not having the gates and not having, you know, the normal advertising in the ballpark. But at the same time, they could make up for that revenue by putting, like, what they've done in Korea, just putting banners in each section of the ballpark with different advertisers. But, like, your thing with the labor dispute, man, like, if I was in their shoes, I would say no way too. There's absolutely no way. With as shady as they've been with 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 uh, 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 like uh, service time, come on, I, I wouldn't get out of here. I'm standing down. Well, I'm, it, I'm not going to end the work. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like there is absolutely no reason to like. It, you're the one that that are at the most risk doing this. Uh, why should you be the one that has to take the pay cut? Uh, Scott, do you think this was a, a planned thing that uh, they were trying to do to uh, to get people to turn on the players? Um, yeah. the problem is I'll never put anything past the W the OWGs, the, the old white men, and yeah, the <laughs> OWGs in baseball because the even in a dire situation like this, they're sitting there thinking, all right, how can we screw these guys in the long run? And so they put out this thing and, you know, everybody wants sports and the pressure is all on, you know, the players when they put this deal out there. So I, I do think like it was definitely a setup. It, 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 I wouldn't think it as much if it wasn't for the timing too, because you know, the, the agreement is about to end and there was already talks that it was going to get contentious regardless of what's going on right now. So yeah, I totally believe that they put something out there knowing that uh, the players wouldn't accept so they could be like, well, see, we tried, but these greedy baseball (laughs) players, they just don't want to do it. (laughs) And that's, I mean, unfortunately that's just how baseball operates. It's, It's 1994 all over again. And it just sucks because in the middle of all this, they're still worried about, you know, their bottom line. They don't give a crap about the fans. Yeah, uh, why not get mad at the billionaires who own that are the one percent instead of the millionaires who are playing that are like the three percent? Right, right. That's that's what kills me about any of these labor disputes is that people will side with the billionaires over the millionaires, and they're just like, "Are you kidding me?" Yes, uh, all the chat is reacting to Scott. Yes, to my Cheryl. wife turning on the light. Everybody's <laughs> loving the fact that you're behind me Cheryl, turning on the light. Cheryl, Cheryl you went seen. ninja style. Oh, 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 looks like Scott's getting the light. <laughs> <laughs> You got a minute left, bud. Wrap it up. <laughs> that was amazing. That was my favorite thing that's I happened her on the to show. T- to turn on the light, and then she tried to be covert, and instead you can just see her looking. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking at this proposal and and what they're what they're lining out uh, aside Thanks, money as- <laughs> money aside, uh, the eighty two game season should they just keep that forever? No. No. 82 games forever. Like you're saying next yes. year, they have 80, next year, I, just I, play 82 games. No, absolutely not. <sighs> I like that. I was a fan of the 82 game season. 
Mm-mm. No, 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 no. See, Mike, I, I, again, I don't know what the number is, but we just got to go back to all the times we've talked about fixing baseball. As long as the playoffs are starting at the beginning of September, whatever amount of games they can get up to there. I don't know if it's that if that means 120 or whatever. They just need to scale back a little bit. They don't need to go all the way back to 82. That's that's too short of a season. But if they just cut out a month and have the playoffs starting the minute that the NFL season is kicking off, they'd be right right where they need to be. Like I said, I, I think that's about 40 games, maybe a little bit less. Yeah, I'm saying like 144. But then I'll see one, it's like 140, 144. But if you like, but the problem is, is how far they've pushed it back. Like April, like, you know, like what, late March this year, what was supposed to be like March 20th. Right. I mean, it, it could it could snow. Like look at Milwaukee last year. It was pouring down buckets of snow and it was almost negative like it was like almost negative two or some malarkey. So like, <laughs> there's just no way for baseball to work in that early. And most cities don't have a roof. Like we don't have a roof. We're not just going to throw a tarp over GABB. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I think maybe 140, 144 is a sweet spot. Cause you got to let pitchers arms get nice and loose and get ready. Cause that, I mean, if you shorten it like that and you don't give them the proper time to get ready, you could probably have some really nasty injuries. Yeah, way worse than what we're already seeing currently. Uh, Matt I mean, Barr, yeah. Matt Barr's saying one ten. Javi says one forty two, and uh, Greg says one twenty five. Should he wants three hundred games? He's going the three hundred game season. Should, should he's finally uh, a man after my heart? Like, I mean, I want all the baseball games, but just in a realistic way, you know, obviously the season should be cut. But if it was up to me, it'd be baseball all year round. Now let's get to the most important part. Is universal. Yes. DA. Yes. It's been brought no, up in the comments a few no, times. Universal. Gotta go. <laughs> I will not stand for the DH under any circumstances. And I know that's what they're going to try to sneak through here. And you want to talk about ESPN testing something out. This is exactly what MOB is going to do with whatever crazy rules they're going to do. And I, I hate the idea of universal. DH. Billy backed away slowly. It seems like you are a, uh, a universal DH fan. You can't stop the future. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's going to happen no matter what. I mean, it's fun watching the double switch and the maneuvering that a manager does. But as as the game progresses, the manager is getting more and more removed from the game and getting less taken out of his hands. Now it's just a matter of time when the DH comes up and it happens and he's just sitting there holding a clipboard like, oh, I guess this is supposed to be the move. I got to be I, I got to be honest. I'm going to be so pissed off if they move to a universal DH knowing that the Reds likely could have made a world series run with dusty baker if we didn't have to worry about dusty baker making terrible decisions with the bullpen uh like that that was the difference if if you could have taken it out of dusty baker's hands the reds could have made a decent run in 2010 or 2012 but no yeah, dusty have managers Why dude not? how are you guys still talking baseball hey drew did you finish the doc you finally finished no, it? Uh, i was gonna say i was like did he finish jordan because i need an update oh, i know all about that jordan stuff but i ain't quite done <laughs> I'm at the point where I can drop in here and there. I'll just pretend I'm Joe for a minute. <laughs> well, <laughs> good to hear from you, man. Uh, appreciate you stopping by the show tonight. Um, let's, you know, let's let's take a quick break here uh, and thank our sponsor, More Labs. More Labs is absolutely amazing. We love them here on this show. Uh, they make insane products that'll help you recover when you're drunk they're going to help you get to sleep they're going to help you focus throughout the day all you got to do go to morelabs.com use the code sports and get 20 percent off your entire order uh, you can get the life hack pack that has all of those products uh within that same six pack it's a miracle uh they're actually sending me some uh pretty soon here and i'm super pumped to just i want to try it in a day where i like I use it the night before to fall asleep, and then I wake up, I take the liquid focus, and then drink all day long, and then take a morning recovery before I go to bed and see how I feel the next morning. Like That's my plan, to test all three of these out in a row. Uh, morelabs.com, use the code SPORTS, get 20% off your entire order. All right, fellas, uh, as baseball is talking about coming back, one sport that is still in question is college football. Uh, one story that floated from Colin Cowherd this week. Uh, He was saying that Alabama is potentially looking at a new week one opponent. They've been reaching out to TCU to potentially replace USC in that first week game. California is under a a lockdown for like another three months. California State Universities have come out and said, 
no students on campus this fall. It's all online classes. And if no students are allowed on campus, that means what are you going to do about those football players? Are they going to be able to come practice? Uh, as we go through this whole thing and you have leagues talking about coming back, MLS is talking about a tournament. Are we going to be screwed out of college football this year? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I hate it. But I mean, uh, the head of the NCAA said if kids aren't on campus and kids aren't at school or in school, then how can there be a student athlete? I think that that answers every question there. It's just not going to happen. Mm, Scott, do you agree? Do you think that's going to be the case? <sighs> I mean, I just I don't understand how it could happen. There's just so many things going against it right now that it just it doesn't seem possible. I mean, the NCAA is in the middle of a, a bunch of crap behind the scenes with, you know, players wanting to get paid and all that stuff and all the, the transition. Of the, like this would be a different season again if all things were equal and we weren't talking about COVID just because of all the off the field stuff that's happened that's kind of changed the game with that. So I mean, I just can't see it if you're talking about states that are like, yeah, well, we're just not going to have players play. I mean, that jacks up the schedule, and eventually you're just going to look at it and be like, all right, well, we got to cut this. I mean, I don't know how they could. Well, and, and they've also said that they're going to leave it kind of up to state by state and see how states feel about things. Uh, and Javi pointing out in the chat, we might get NCAA football, but with no Pac-12. And that's the other thing. Uh, what happens if an entire conference is under lockdown and they're just like, all right, well, they're not playing this year, so – I guess everybody gets a bye week if you've got a Pac-12 team on your schedule. Like, what? I, I just don't understand how you even make that happen if an entire conference is like, yeah, we're out. The, so the committee is like, whew, we don't even have to pretend this year. We can just <laughs> exclude the Pac-12 and keep it moving. We don't have to pretend like we were in there for hours deliberating, you know, Utah or whatever crap team decided they wanted to go undefeated there, and they were never going to give them a real shot. They're like, yeah, you know, that's rough, but, uh, well, you know what are you going to do? We'll just have to move forward. And wow, there's still three SEC teams in the final four. How did that <laughs> so it'll just be business as usual, I guess. <laughs> this is the time for the AAC to take those reins from the Pac-12. <laughs> I was going to say, Maction's really going to jump off is what it's going to be. Well, like, he he here's the reality of it, right? We're going to get something. Pac-12 is probably hosed. If California is really sheltered in place for another three months, yeah, they screwed. But any other place they can get any other kind of ball played where they can they can you know turn a little bit of a profit, they're gonna do it because otherwise all these schools can be broke as mayonnaise. I don't know. Have we have we popped the seal on the, the explicit we have, flag? We have not. Oh yeah, we're fine on explicit flag. You're oh, good. They're gonna be broke. Oh. As fuck. And so they're gonna do whatever they can to figure something out. Whether it's them, you know, social distancing and you're just playing seven on sevens with a center and no pass rushers. They're going to do something because they need that money. Jim says UCF is just going to declare themselves champions with no season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, though, would they be wrong? I mean, you know, the, maybe they get a legit shot at the Final Four. And we see what happens. I mean, you know. Okay, but see, this is where things are going to get interesting because uh, it, it's funny Drew brought up the MAC. The MAC has actually announced that they are doing away with a ton of uh, tournaments for other sports. Like, they're not going to play. Uh, they're going to play the basketball Mac championship because they have to, but for the next Makes four money. years, well, and, and that potentially gets them another bid into the tournament. So I get that, but oh, wait, you're, you're talking like long-term. You're not talking about like this fall starting this school year, like starting 2021, they won't have a uh, baseball tournament. They won't have softball tournament. They won't have like any of the, the smaller sports aren't going to have their normal conference tournaments because they don't have the money that brought in uh you know that they normally would get from the the ncaa tournament but now if football doesn't happen do group of five schools are screwed period i i, I don't know so there's there's a part of me that almost wonders if they would wanted to cut that stuff forever and they're just like oh my god this is our chance no you don't want to cut a conference tournament why would you cut a conference tournament who bro you you, you really gonna sit here and tell me that we want to keep the conference cross-country tournament alive <laughs> I mean, let's but be see, honest, like the 40 athletes and their parents probably don't even watch that shit. But see, this is what I'm talking about. Like this is, and this is why I've said all along schools can't pay these kids, because if you do that, it's because schools like the Mac schools and the AAC, they don't they're already cutting like UC's already cut men's soccer. Dude, that, that's, that's the thing. Anyone who had any insight behind the scenes or not even behind the scenes, but just understand how economics worked in sports knew that all these schools were broke if it weren't for their football or basketball programs. Like seriously, if you take if you take football away from Ohio State, their entire athletic department collapses, and that's Ohio State. 
Right. And you know that's what, what I mean? I'm saying. Like all of these schools are going to be in real trouble if there's no football this year. That's why I think there's got to be a push for it. And with California saying shelter in place and the Pac-12 saying we might not play. This is going to have some real serious ramifications. Well, that's, for that's where I'm thinking other what they've already done is they've already said, all right, y- y'all just cancel your stuff. Pac-12, whatever, California, we got you. We'll float you alone or whatever. The government going to bail them out. And, and that's what they've already sorted out. But if, if you're not getting government money in terms of billions to back those schools, then this is the end of college athletics for them. And, and I can only assume they figured something out to solve that problem, and which is why they're being that aggressive with the, nope, we good, punt. Besides the fact that they had no contenders anyways, and no one really cared. <laughs> Scott, are you going to be happy if this is what brings down the NCAA? I don't care what it takes. Bring it down. <laughs> bring, it just, down yeah. but bring it down, but keep <laughs> college bring it down. football. I mean, I well, I mean, college football is fine, you know, but it, it, but just in general, like the the NCAA itself, like I don't have a problem with any of the individual schools, the players, or I just have a way, I have a problem with the way that the NCAA is run. Well, also, just look at it from if you just zoom back and think about it as like just a basic human thing, is that these schools are putting children at risk to play football for us. That's a fair point. That's, that's a, a bad look. I, yeah, no, you bring up a great point, Billy, because just in the last segment, I was like, you can't side against the players in baseball if they want to protect themselves. And then this time I'm like, come on, I want my college football. <laughs> like, what? A, I need my boys out what, there. What well, that's because that's because, you know, baseball players are soft and, you know, at the, at the slightest breeze, it all collapse over anyways. You know, those you know hangnails get them out for weeks. You know what? I got to go. This is, this is ridiculous. I'm just... <laughs> I mean, you know, pleasure, though, pleasure what, though, you, like <laughs> at, at the moment, there's no superstar, like super name, like, like you know, I know Mike ain't gonna like this, but uh, there isn't any USC where there's like all these household names because Alabama is always a bunch of you know no names until they get to the league, and then it's like, oh yeah, all those guys went to Alabama, but there isn't like a powerhouse team of stars that like it's stacked to where you know we're worried about missing it. It's like, eh, of all the seasons. Yeah. And and a fringe benefit is it ruins Sunshine's final season in college, which means we'll all forget about him and William. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk. Let's shift gears from NCAA. Let's talk a little NFL real quick. Uh, two stories out of the NFL this week. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, we got another uniform I'm drop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm jumping the gun. I don't care. Dumpster fire. The Rams oh, so bad. The Rams revealed their uniforms today. Uh, we want to know fire or dumpster fire. Here is what the new Rams uniforms look like. They've got some blue on blue, uh, blue on yellow. They also, I was, uh, I thought this was white on white, but apparently it's bone on bone, which horrible color name. Giggity. Bone yeah. on bone. <laughs> you cannot. <laughs> You cannot call this bone on. You can't say that your uniforms are bone on bone and expect. I mean, if you're the not- Rams, of course you can. <laughs> and if you're Seattle, you definitely can. Uh, Javi pointing out but it's Dallas a- is the originators of yep. bone on bone. And 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 Scott went there. I was biting my tongue, but thanks, buddy. <laughs> I got you, baby. I thought Sandusky was the original bone on bone. Look at bone. that <laughs> Comic Sans font. It's so bad. Maybe, it is- maybe this is just an artist yeah. rendering, right? This looks like a draft kind nah. of. Thing. Uh, that's I mean? oh, that's no, what they are. They're bad. There was a guy on Twitter who actually showed, like, picked them up and actually had the real jerseys. And, like, the numbers are so bad. It just looks like somebody melted a crayon and then just pressed it yes. onto the jersey. Yeah, the numbers look terrible. I do like the detail of adding the, uh, like, the ram horn within the number. I think that was a cool detail, but horribly executed. The fade from yellow to white on the, the blue uniforms. Ooh. Ugh. The only nice thing about this is the helmets are very metallic, and I think those look sweet. Outside of that, straight dumpster fire. Yeah. Also, oh wait, they added the the word art image that they made for their new logo <laughs> into the jersey. Oh, cool. Really cool. Man, if I moved the franchise in Madden and had to create new uniforms from scratch and just hit you know auto generator and they spit back this and be like, no, 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 no. This this looks fake. This looks phony. There's no way I'm wearing these jerseys. And they signed off on this. They this is real life jerseys. Love them. Did you did you see the stitching where it says Los Angeles Rams like on the bottom left corner? It's Ugh. like white, and then it's got God. like four did yellow you see the threads. And it's of crooked. The seams. It's it's bad. The cross stitch. Whose craftsmanship was this? No, but I it's appreciate stamped. that analysis, Billy. 
It's it, hip. Watch out for it just because it's made poorly. Uh, Matt Bars. <laughs> Jalen Jalen Ramsey is like, man, trade me back to the Jaguars. They were a dumpster <laughs> fire, but I ain't wearing these. Yeah. The, wait, wait. Did you say the Jaguars? Yeah, the Jaguars. Oh, that's almost <laughs> as bad as Apricot. <laughs> Uh, Greg saying these are the NFC Pro Bowl uh, uniforms from 2017. Uh, Javi oh, saying gradient numbers. Matt Barr says they look like they work at Best Buy. <laughs> 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 Somebody said they look like a Michigan bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> ah, like those, those high schools that rip off the, the Michigan like thing, but they got to just change it a little bit so they don't get sued. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aaron Donald just in an interview, just like, I wanted to say I played like the fridge, not carry a fridge. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, definitely dumpster fire on those uniforms. Absolutely disgusting trash. Uh, Scott, I know we still need to do our ratings from Betty White to who was it? uh, What was the rating scale you were supposed to go on? Oh, geez, I forget. Uh, it was it was something hilarious, but I can't remember now. Mm, well, we're solid at this. Uh, but yeah, that is... I mean, we, we're good at callbacks. Can we Betty talk... White to Barry White? <laughs> it wasn't that alliterative. It was... Uh... It, but it was definitely somebody hardcore uh, up at the top end of this. But this is this is a horrible uniform. I'm, I I don't like it. Can we talk about this Sammy Watkins interview that came out from Bleacher Report? Have you guys had a chance to read this at all? I did not. Oh my I, god! I read over a little bit. This dude, so Sammy Watkins talked. Uh, he he was very open in an interview where he talked about playing in Buffalo and how he was battling depression and he drank a lot. He was high. He got high before games. Uh, but then he he also talked about some pretty strange beliefs that he has. I'm not here to cast judgment on his beliefs, but he believes that like he can take the form of other lives like he he's played football as a dinosaur he believes that like he takes over other people's bodies like he remembers somebody else catching a touchdown pass and people coming up and being like great job sammy and it wasn't him that caught it uh he believes that there's evil demons all around us and at any time one of these demons can like cross over into our world and snatch your life uh i'm very worried about sammy watkins is what i'm trying to say i i am He's very either smoking not enough or too much weed i can't <laughs> figure it out because that is bizarre he's taking this whole lil wayne lookalike thing a little too <laughs> far he he was yeah. stuck in buffalo for a while though that'll that'll change a man yeah but i yeah. mean i heard from beast mode back when he was in buffalo that at least they got applebee's i mean go go chill at applebee's sammy if life is that oh, rough oh. Well, tread lightly on that topic now. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't get Billy all fired up about trigger. Applebee's. Yeah. Billy, well, is not is that your favorite track on your upcoming album uh, out May 15th, available it, for pre-order now? It, it's either that one or Paper Shredder. It's a toss-up. I'm, uh, people are going to have to check out the album now to because I and I'm not going to be the guy that's like oh, give us a little taste of the album but like <laughs> yeah but now I want it because I hear Paper Shredder and I'm like oh that's got to be so good <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's got to be so good after this you can go to SoundCloud and I have a couple of the tracks up oh hello sweetie there you go good to see you <laughs> Billy was cat popping in <laughs> once again <laughs> I didn't know if you saw but he crawled behind me all the way around went around my couch and then came up on the side <laughs> uh, gotta, gotta get the good shot you know gotta get the good side in this shot that's right I'm... also sammy watkins did more than okay buddy uh sammy watkins did more than just weed that guy was on a mixture of acid and molly <laughs> that's very i i wonder how much of it is although he talked about how you know he, he battled his demons and he's weird choice of words there because he talked a lot about demons but he battled like what he was going through and got over the depression and and was able to get through everything but then like this whole this this whole belief system is bizarre to me and i'm i don't i'm trying to decide if it's drug induced or if it's cte and i can't figure out <laughs> like it's i feel like it's got to be Dude one of was the never two. on the field long enough to get hit that's a good point i mean he was the, he you know had what the most bizarre? non-contact injuries of anyone but as bizarre as it is, I'm still like, you know what? He's more sane than some of these NBAers with their flat earths. Like, I, <laughs> I, I believe point. that he, you know, heard people congratulating him on touchdowns that wasn't him and, you know, playing as a dinosaur more than I believe the flat earthers. So he's got that <laughs> going for him. 
Yeah. Also, no one's really batting an eye to Scientology anymore. And it's mainstream to believe that our government is ran by reptiles. So I don't think he's like that far off. I really don't. That's a good Look, point. Man, what everyone the hell is just finally now? realized Scientology is at least being open with their capitalism while all the other religions are trying to, you know, play it off. That's true. And that's why we're kind of like, ah, fine, whatever. <laughs> whatever, Tom Cruise. You can have him. Sure. Go to space, you idiot. Uh, but. Like, I think the most crazy thing in that article is him saying that he wanted to play for the Bengals with Joe Burrow. <laughs> yes. That's ridiculous. No one wants to come here. Billy, that, as a, that's actually what would get you committed. I mean, all the other <laughs> stuff, doctors are like, eh, well, you know, we've seen people who think that or whatever. He wants to play for the Bengals voluntarily. We got to get this guy some meds. <laughs> Put him in a straight jacket. Make sure it's orange and black striped. <laughs> Billy, as a Bengals fan, how you feeling about this upcoming season? Five and eleven. I mean, you didn't fix the offensive line. You don't know what Jonah Williams is going to do, and you signed uh, uh, Corey Hart to a terrible deal. So, dude, and, this is some analysis. Yeah, yeah, this is way too in depth for what our show what, normally wait, is. What's five times their win total, though? I mean, at five and eleven, isn't that five <laughs> times more than the games than the one last year? Or did they win two last year? They won two. Oh, okay. All right. So not quite five times, but still, I mean, that's an impressive turnaround. They might draft six. <laughs> yeah. With people saying that, like, and our division's just too good. I mean, the Ravens are just going to stomp everybody. It's going to be silly. Billy, here's what's going to happen. Madden Curse takes out Lamar. Um, oh, okay. That was weird. Madden Curse takes out Lamar. The okay. Browns pull the Browns. Ben Roethlisberger goes to jail for inappropriately touching somebody in the bathroom. Bengals, Bengals win still the AFC North. <laughs> <laughs> like all of those things no. happen, and they still finish fourth. Yeah, because RG three comes out and plays and plays his fucking dick off. Scott, I love Baker it. Mayfield somehow still pulls out seven wins with a terrible offensive line in front of him. And then Ben Roethlisberger might go to jail, but sure, but Trump will go himself to release that guy. <laughs> and then on the way, they're going to go beat up Stormy Daniels. Then he's going to hit the field. <laughs> well, there it goes. All right, Bengals in fourth place. You've, you've That's swayed. That's a callback me. right there, though. Stormy Daniels, that feels like 15 years ago now. Or three days. I don't know what time is anymore. That's true. Yeah, time right. doesn't exist. Uh, let's talk about this quick story here. So the NFL auction that happened during the draft, uh, Roger was talking about how people could bid on an opportunity to watch a game from his man cave where they had the draft. Uh, you get to watch a Monday night football with Roger Goodell in his man cave and all the money is going to COVID relief. And here's another auction site where rich people get to do something that normal people may want to do. Actually, in this one, I feel like normal people would be like, nah, I'll pass. I'm not even going to buy a raffle Hardest ticket for this one. <laughs> but the person I don't want to hang out with Goodell unless I can give him a laundry list of reasons why the league actually sucks since he took <laughs> over. Well, <laughs> that may happen because the winner of this was Dave Portnoy, who is the uh, owner of Barstool Sports. He has a, a history of hating Roger Goodell. Oh, I hope he rolls up with the clown t-shirt on. Yes, That's all that matters. That's it. He won this for $250,000, which is amazing because a lot of that money came from a t-shirt that made fun of Roger Goodell. So he bought time with Roger Goodell using money of a t-shirt making fun of Roger Goodell. And now Roger Goodell has to sit there and just deal with this. He's got to sit like Goodell can't say no at this point, right? No, he can't. Uh, not yeah, at all. Sorry, I don't hey, know what Drew. happened there. I, I lost all my sound. So, um, <laughs> Drew's to gonna go ahead and take a conference call. <laughs> yeah, get back to work. <laughs> Wait a second, Drew, with the the classic uh, line from anybody who has not been paying attention in a conference call. Oh, I I totally lost my sound there. But can yeah. you repeat that again? So sorry. <laughs> oh, bad, bad connection. I don't know. I just lost you. I don't know what happened. So basically, we've got COVID bingo here. Is that yeah, what you're yep, like, pretty much. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've talked about not wearing real pants before. Uh, I, we've I had brought up audio problems. Audio problems. <laughs> I brought up uh, what was that? Time. So that counts. <laughs> and the free space. So we're good. We got a bingo. All right, let's call it a night. Bingo, we get to eat ice cream. Hell yeah. Yeah, hey, Neapolitan only, though. Neapolitan <laughs> Save that bucket. <laughs> uh, 
All right. And as always, uh, this interesting portion of the show brought to you by my bookie. Uh, look, everybody, Craft Root Sports brought to you by my bookie. Use the promo code 12 ounce sports to get 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Be sure to tune into all the gambling shows here on 12 ounce and then put that knowledge to practice on my bookie. Be sure to use that promo code 12 ounce sports to get the bonus. You can find their banners and links on every page of the station site at www.12OunceSportsRadio.com. Sell out. You know, I saw a bunch of people that have been betting on Russian table tennis. That was like the big thing to bet on recently. There was a dude that bet a hundred dollars on a ten game parlay in Russian table tennis and won like twenty five grand. Oh, I don't. I mean, what? How do you even Why is bet? Thing you can bet a ten game parlay on. I, I, I'm. I know. Like uh, he just like bet a tournament. Was like I'm. I'm gonna pick these ten winners and bet and won twenty five grand. I didn't realize you could bet on Russian table tennis, but now I'm fiending for some Russian table tennis. Yeah, how do you even do research? Like, are you just deep dive YouTube? I feel like at that point, if you're willing to bet on Russian table tennis, you're not researching shit. You are 100% just being like, yeah. I don't care. I'm picking a name out of a hat. I just need to, I need some action is what I need. Uh, you know who, who bet on that was Wayne Gretzky's ex-wife. <laughs> I was thinking Jordan. Jordan's like, I'm in. What do you what do you got? You guys are betting on table tennis? Russians? I'm in. <laughs> I owe drug dealers money. Russian table tennis ain't shit to me. He's like, Yeah, that's nothing. I normally throw down more money on Japanese table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of jordan uh the jordan documentary came out we had episodes seven and eight this week uh we're nearing the end of this it's coming to a close here we, uh, next week will uh, sunday will be the last day <laughs> say goodbye wait what <laughs> sorry i just I, I heard you saying we're nearing the end all right so we had uh the retirement and the baseball career we had the space jam pickup games in these episodes mm. we had jordan coming back we had the reason for the change from 45 to 23 uh, and then the the craziest thing that i saw was uh, how jordan would just invent slights to keep him motivated like yeah that dude didn't say hi to me and then that became like a reason why he scored 50 points in a night. This dude was so crazy. He would make shit up in his head to motivate him. How off do you have to be to, to have to make stuff up? Michael Jordan off when you're the best <laughs> in the world or the best ever. You kind of have to keep digging to find stuff. I mean, <laughs> what someone said good game. And he's like, I'm going to score more on him than he scored the whole game in the first half. <laughs> and then he made it up. As it Jordan didn't even S. happen. It didn't even happen. That wasn't even real. Uh, Scott, what'd you think of episode seven and eight? Woo, every time I think that uh, the the next two episodes or the the two most current episodes, I'm gonna cry less than I did the last two episodes. Woo, I, I get hit hard. The uh, the Jordan father stuff. I I mean, I knew it was coming, and my mom's in town, so she was watching with me and the wife, and uh, she's like, "Why are you so emotional?" And I'm just like, "I know what's coming. Like, I I knew you know the Father's Day game and all that stuff." And it's just really sad. So, I, you know, I cried about that. But I mean, then there's the laughter, the <laughs> the Gary Payton laugh, the, you know, just the, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff in these two episodes that like every time I think, ah, the last episode, last two episodes were the best. Then these two episodes came along and killed it. And so I'm really excited for the last two episodes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. You, you just, Matt mentioned it. Like we need a weekly sit down with Jordan where he just talks about whatever, because it's gold. Javi bringing up the point they should have just ended uh, with that end of episode seven when Jordan got very emotional talking about being hard on his teammates and ended with him just saying, I need a break. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a break. And then it just, you know, the episode cut out and that, that could have been a legit end uh, to this series uh, to end the documentary that way. That was probably the, the heaviest, uh, the most emotional thing that we've seen Jordan. The thing that drives me crazy though, and I, I'm not trying to just be contrarian guy, but like, these were the episodes that when this was coming out, Jordan was like, people aren't going to like me. They're not going to like me uh, after they see this. And if that's the worst, it was like, we knew you were an asshole, dude. Everybody, everybody kind of knew that you have to be an asshole to be that good. You're going to ride people. Oh, big deal. So you, you told somebody where that mouth at now, ho, like something like that's the worst that you said. Come on. I, I feel like we've been sold a little bit on this one because I was expecting some some stuff that I'd be like, damn, 
I didn't expect that out of Jordan. I there's nothing in this documentary that I haven't seen that I haven't expected from him. You know. Well, we're also being sold um, a lot of things because this is actually produced by Jordan's production team. It's his propaganda so, film. Yeah, so here's the thing: <laughs> he was a lot more of an asshole than we're showing. This is him opening up a little bit. I mean, the guy didn't even film any of it in his home. He's like, nope, I don't want anyone to see it. So they rented three mansions by his house. So the she fact that we're, know. I don't even think we're getting close to the real story anyway. Is this entertaining? 100%. But do I buy that this is 100% accurate? No, I don't. Because I still don't buy that Michael Jordan's dad was murdered because of him not, like, I believe that his, there is something to do with his gambling. That's just too shady. Oh, and damn. Like, I think it, it's still a farce. Like, I still don't buy, even though everyone's like, <laughs> everyone's so stupid. I'm like, how could that many people say it and there's that much evidence and it's just right there? And then just to turn around and say, no, you're dumb. You're just a dumb idiot on the outside. You don't know what you're talking about. I just, no, I still don't buy it. So Billy is still on the uh, on that conspiracy theory. What about the other conspiracy theory, uh, Scott? They announced, or they, they addressed this in the documentary where, Jordan said his uh, his retirement had nothing to do with his gambling. We talked about it on the show in that conspiracy theory. Are you buying what Jordan said in the in this doc? Yeah, no. I mean, it's <laughs> I, it, it's unchanged. I mean, I I feel like he really was burnt out, and it just it, it like happened to coincide where you know did he get suspended? I don't think officially, but David Stern was like. Look, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you were gone for, I don't know, say 18 months and it just kind of worked out like that. But I mean, I, I think that the burnout was real. Like, it, I mean, it, he clearly was at, at a breaking point as far as like not having a challenge and, and just being frustrated with, like, I mean, nothing made more sense than when he said, when you're doing it that many times in a row, like you, you lose kind of like that, that hunger. It, it kind of felt like, you know, I don't know what it would be like, but if your team wins a championship, right, and, like, you're used to it. Like, I feel like Yankees fans can't really celebrate, like, fans of a team that come out of nowhere. You know, Royals fans winning it or whatever the hell it is, whatever it may be, where it's just, like, if you do it year in and year out, it becomes more of the mundane or, like, oh, it was expected versus – oh my God, this is a lifetime achievement. Like, I don't care whatever else happens with my franchise. So I, I totally understood that like burnout factor. I get that. But it was also too convenient that the White Sox signed Jordan almost immediately when Reinsdorf owned both teams. That was kind of interesting. Uh, also, I mean, just, no, think about it, man. It makes the paperwork so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a, it's a departmental transfer at that point. You know, it's not a hire and a fire. <laughs> Yeah, cut the guy some slack, right? I yeah, love just moving him to, from department to department. Dude, you ever fill out an I nine? That shit's impossible. Yeah, hard pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do love, you know, people shit on Jordan in his baseball career, but I, I, I guess I never realized that he went straight to Double A, and for him to do what he did in Double A after not playing for ten years was damn impressive. Oh yeah, I mean they didn't even they didn't cover it in the doc, but his fall league numbers were dope. He hit like 246 and had like like 10 dingers and like 30 ribs and like 20 Do you some know games. How many Dinger slinger. Wish they could have like Jordan numbers and in another sport like comparable or if they wanted to play baseball. I mean, they were awful and everybody makes fun. I love that he's like, yep, I'm not talking to SI anymore because yeah. they just did this cover and, and kept it moving or whatever. But yeah. uh, just in general, like they were bad, but we got to remember how hard baseball really is. It. dude it's crazy and the the fact that he no, no 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 sorry hold on a second baseball is not hard hitting a major league pitcher right, is him. hard mute him. Mute him. Mute him. <laughs> Please mute you, him play, now. you want to play that game yeah, yeah i do no. no he's got control of the mutes <laughs> what's that scott what you say <laughs> billy you got plenty of time go ahead i'd love to hear some more of your thoughts no, i'm good <laughs> Mute me. Uh, I just try not to explode. I'll mute you three and talk about Motown all night, and you can't do shit about it. Uh, incorrectly, that is. Make sure you put that uh, qualifier in there. I mean, I clearly didn't. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to soil my good name and say I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Come on, that goes for way more than Motown too. Let's be real. Uh, what would you guys think about the Space Jam pickup game stuff that they they discussed in the doc? That was awesome. 
that I would love to see some more of those. Like they put some of the clips in there, but I would love to just see whatever they had just played out. Because I mean, can you imagine the smack talking those like after the stuff that they talked about with the dream team? Imagine the smack talking those pickup games with no reps, call your own fouls. Well, that's what I thought was interesting. It's like we've heard about the Dream Team stuff like for a few years now and, you know, the the Zapruder film that, that came out of like those actual practices and how good they were. But I was completely unaware of the fact that all of these guys showed up on set and they were playing these pickup games. And I'm like, why wasn't this talked about more than it was? That's what I think is my biggest beef with this whole documentary is – a lot of this stuff is known. Like we've, we know a lot of the stuff that we've seen in here. You didn't have to spend as much time on Dennis Rodman's backstory or on Scottie Pippen's backstory. Give me the stuff that we don't know. Like, I don't really care about that stuff. I want to see stuff like space jam pickup games. And I want to see stuff like, uh, Jordan making fun of his teammates in practice and punching Steve Kerr in the face. That's the kind of shit I want to see in this documentary. I would even like to see a cartoon reenactment if that's all we can get. <laughs> I just wanted to see like, I just want to see more behind the scenes footage from Space Jam. Yes. Yeah. That's really it. Just just like more green screen stuff of them trying to guard Michael Jordan. I just want to see the director go up to me like, hey Mike, just listen. Um, we need you to imagine that this this person in this green suit right here. That's Bugs Bunny. Okay, great. All right, here we go. <laughs> I, I mean, to be honest with you, I would have rather had more on, uh, like, let, let's do an offshoot of just Bill Murray during that time rather than uh, Dennis Rodman. I got a whole 30 for 30 on Dennis Rodman. It's like, what was Bill Murray thinking during all of this? There wasn't enough Bill Murray time. We got, like, a couple of shots, and I'm like, BFM is the, the star of the show that we didn't get to see. How did he not get an interview for this? Like everybody else gets interviewed, but Bill Murray doesn't Check get interviewed. He probably did. I got an interview for Christ's sakes. He probably yeah. got interviewed, and Jordan's like, "Nah, cut that shit." No, Bill Murray was probably too busy crashing like other people's weddings. <laughs> did your cat just knock your microphone off the table? No, my wife knocked over her water bottle. <laughs> uh, Hobby, yeah. but see, that's why they got to have a sippy anything. cup, right? Because otherwise, shit gets broke. Hobby brings up a good point. He says, is this a Mike documentary or is it the 98 Bulls? Uh, and it, it is supposed to be the 98 Bulls. It's supposed to be the last title run of the 98 Bulls. We all know that the reason why there was even a 98 title run was because of Jordan. So it's almost like it is a Jordan documentary because it's a 98 Bulls documentary. Like you can't, you can have a Jordan documentary without the 98 Bulls, but you can't have the 98 Bulls without a big part of that being Jordan. Right. Scott, 100%. Are you uh are you ready for these last two episodes? Are you prepared? Is your body ready for it? I don't know how much I'm going to cry during that last shot, but uh I'll be all right, I guess. I mean, the the fact that they they it was eventually going to have to end is a thing, but uh I don't know how much my body is ready for it, but mentally I'm there. A question Dude, that was If you made it through 8, if you made it through episode 8, you're going to be all right. <laughs> a question like, I don't know was... how I don't know how you get more heart wrenching than the way that one ended with him on the floor in the training room. Like, holy shit, man. But I remember watching that live. And so again, I knew that was coming. I, I was more broken up when he was talking about his father and they had all those interviews with his dad. Like again, that stuff haven't seen. And it's just like, like their relationship, I guess I never realized like how super close they were. I knew that they, he was an important part of his life, obviously, because, you know, we all saw him crying in the locker room, but just to hear him talk about everything and then, you know, to see all these different things like, oh, there his father was and all these previous things. And then you get up to that moment. And it was like, God, I know what's coming. Like there was nothing more heart wrenching when he said, you know, he was my best friend. And knowing that he was about to be murdered, it was it was tough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. That was definitely difficult. And it's going to be tough to know, like, what am I going to do on Sunday nights now? That's going to be taken <laughs> away. So I guess we're all just going to have to wait till we see the 0102 Wizards doc. <laughs> I would watch that shit too, though. Here, here's the thing, though, boys. Come on, don't kid yourselves. There's going to be an episode 11 and 12 because they had to rush this out, right? So they're going to come back around and be like, man, here's all the crap we cut because we couldn't figure out how to fit it in. They're gonna, there's going to be a couple more that sneak out. It may not be for like a month or so, but we're going to get some more. I guarantee yeah, I need- yeah, I need more Bill Wellington, you know, in my life. <laughs> more of that amazing mustache. I want more Horace Grant. Shoot. 
there Dude, was... I want more Tony Kukoc. Yes. The guy was a beast, and they're just grazing over him. I, I want more Patrick Ewing whining like I did the, like and knowing that they interviewed him during this and then there's the the off you know camera stuff where he's sitting there like I'm not watching it again I lived through it I'm like but you sat down for an interview right. so, I mean how hard was it Patrick hey, man, like, money's money is money man <laughs> I could yeah. watch an entire episode of Jordan watching everybody else's interviews. Like that could be an entire oh episode for God, me so and I'd be on board with it. Like every yeah. interview that they show that uh, to Jordan where he cracks up or has some reaction. I, that's all I want to see is Jordan watching the interviews. Give me that as a bonus episode and I'm golden. Uh, um, there was a question yeah, was that was say. posed in the group. What's the better documentary? Now that we're eight episodes in, we've got an idea what this one is as as on its face value. Is it the Jordan doc or is it the OJ documentary? Scott, you love that OJ documentary. <laughs> so which one's better, the OJ 10-part doc or the Jordan 10-part doc? And, and I'm going to blow your mind. I, I mean, as much as I love Jordan, there's just this weird fascination I got about OJ, and that was so well done. Like, the the first two episodes and then the, the one with the trial, like, I'm just so fascinated by everything that, but that was actually better, but it was more in a movie format. I mean, it was released in theaters as a movie, whereas this is a straight documentary. And this is great. I mean, this blows away all the other 30 for 30s if you want to stack them against it. But that OJ documentary stands alone to me. Like, I, I can still watch that and just be in awe. Billy, do you agree that the, uh, the OJ doc is the, the premiere of the two? 100%. Yeah, because th they did some great in investigative journalism and this has been a puff piece i'm not saying it's not entertaining <laughs> don't get me wrong i'm having a great time but i definitely learned more and enjoyed the oj doc well, well yeah because i mean if you if you learned later on that like oj had a hand in it and it was like you only got to see what oj wanted you to see it's like that's where it's like as much as i love mike i mean we're sitting here talking mm -hmm. about it it's like it's tainted he has a hand in it so it's like anything that he mm -hmm. didn't approve uh, didn't get put on there so it's mm -hmm. like that might be unfortunate i love mj's but it's like i want the raw unedited unbiased opinion and that's what you got with the oj thing it's like okay oj has nothing to do with this we're just going to present everything as is and you got all those interviews from all these different players that you had never heard from and, and people that hadn't spoken about the trial in years it's like it just i don't know it was elevated to to another level like i, I live tweeted that and i don't have twitter right now so i'm not live tweeting this but i mean i it, it's a different type of thing like i didn't cry during the oj thing but it's just because it was just i was in awe the whole yeah time. your jaw was on the floor 100 percent right. scott do you do you have one of those like utter box waterproof cases on your phone Mm, no <laughs> then it's probably good you're not live tweeting this because you'd be buying a new phone good point good point mm -hmm. yeah i there's multiple times i've had to get up and go to the other room and just like watch it from the other room it's like my mom was like are you having a moment I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm having several <laughs> sit over there and don't judge me uh, let's uh, get into last call this is last call brought to you by tavor uh if you guys need to stock up your beer fridge especially now you don't want to go out to the grocery store have it delivered directly to you from tavor download the app use the code 258023 on the payments and credit screen before you place that first order and you'll get ten dollars off your second order uh, tavor has tons of beers from all over the country beers you can't get anywhere else hit them up download the app 258023 on the payments and credit screen uh, stock up your beer fridge today with Tavor. This week we were drinking Batisserie Neapolitan from Energy City Brewing, 10% ABV brew. Uh, Scott, you consumed it right away. Did it hold up for you? I'm very upset we only had one in the can of this. Yeah. This beer was fantastic. Wait, what? Hold on a minute. We, what are y'all drinking? Because that, that ain't what I have. Did you go with the other one? Uh, yeah, we're doing the chili one. Yeah, Drew, <laughs> did, Drew didn't get the text earlier. God damn it, you asshole. Drew, how was that? How is that chili chocolate beer that you were Holy drinking? Oh I told God. you, I told you guys in the text earlier in the week, it's gonna be shit in lava. Like oh. hands down, this stuff is so spicy. <laughs> like it, it makes you bristle. My tongue is like tingling right now. Oh, and I, I'm shit. like halfway through the thing too. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know how many times you guys have uh, gotten Fremont bourbon barrel aged stuff from Tavor, but Ooh. they have Fremont 
bourbon barrel aged stouts on there all the time and those are the best bourbon barrel aged stouts i've ever had they're fantastic but they're 19 dollars for a, a 12 oh. ounce it's like damn i can't do that <laughs> like i've got i've got four of them in my pantry man that it must be nice to be making that comedian money <laughs> yeah well i went out to seattle and bought them there so and then shipped them back uh, I think this Neapolitan was fantastic. Super good brew. Uh, would drink again. Absolutely. Very chocolatey. You've got the strawberry flavor. Good mouth feel on it. Uh, definitely one that you should scope out. And we got it from Tavor. So you can find beers just like this on Tavor. Again, download the app. Use the code 258023 for $10 off your second order. Sell out. All right. Uh, yeah, Drew, I, I'm sorry, man. Uh, Scott didn't have that one. So we. <laughs> We had to call an audible, so I apologize that you didn't get that message oh, earlier yeah, today. Yeah, I see this shit. Uh, real quick, <laughs> before he's we... the wide receiver that ran the wrong route because he didn't realize the audible got called. <laughs> it was the hot route, Drew. It was the hot route. I'm <laughs> uh, playing PlayStation. I'm over here playing Xbox. That's, that's all it is, right? <laughs> you said triangle. I heard X. <laughs> shit happened. Before we uh, before we close out the show, I did want to ask one question. We'll go around the horn. Uh, real quick answers. You guys don't have to expand. You know, whatever. Uh, Mike Tyson shared a video of him training. He looks insanely fast, ridiculously powerful. Uh, 53 years old, but he is a freaking beast. And Evander Holyfield put out a video, too, where he's training. And he was like, look, I might fight Tyson again. I don't know if the price is right. I would do it. Scott, would you buy Tyson Holyfield 3? Yep. Billy, would you buy Tyson Holyfield 3? Oh, yeah. Drew, would you buy Tyson Holyfield 3? I'd bootleg that shit. <laughs> I was going to say, I would Facebook live stream it from somebody. I'm not going <laughs> to. Oh, I mean, when you said buy, I assumed you meant watch some way, somehow. I ain't paying for shit. <laughs> I'm paying pay $75 for that. So, yeah, I mean, no, I'm yeah. not paying for it, but I will watch it live. Yeah, neither of them need the money. Right. Yeah, neither one needs it. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, it's still 50-year-old dudes fighting. Is that really one that I really want to see is 50-year-old guys? Dude, so did you still? Well, hold on. Did Sam you see Tyson fights? I God's sakes! I did see Tyson. Mayweather don't fight. He he dodges and runs away and beats it's, women. But that's what I'm saying. They're still trying to sell that as like a legit fight. So I mean, I'm gonna watch somebody like. I mean, I'm assuming Mike's gonna go for the opposite ear. So I'm tuning in just for that. <laughs> Would you watch Floyd Mayweather and Pacquiao fight on Xbox? Man, I wouldn't even watch them fight uh, like in their prime on Xbox. Like they were like, "Oh, these are the versions you wanted to see." I'm like, "Nah, I'm good." <laughs> I just feel like they would, if if we could get them to play and fight on Xbox together, at some point Pacquiao would be beating the shit out of Mayweather. Mayweather get pissed and then cold cock him in the side of the head, and then there'd be a brawl because then the posse's would be fighting, and it would be like some MMA. Uh, a weigh-in show like situation with conor mcgregor and like all of a sudden there'd be a, a ladder thrown through the window <laughs> i'd watch mario versus luigi before i watch mayweather versus Pacquiao, I'm just saying. Uh, you know what this mayweather you know tyson fight like or not mayweather geez louise all of field or whatever this fight i i would be very excited to watch 50 year old men fight to basically the death because who knows that might be my new king i might be into that just <laughs> Yeah, I'm down. You never know if you don't try. Billy's like, That's if it gets thinking. my dick hard, whatever. I'm cool with that. Speaking of Billy's dick getting hard, his new album drops May 15th, Drinking at the Kids Table. Uh, it is available for pre-order now on all digital platforms. Uh, Billy, where can people find you on the uh, on the social networks? They can find me on Twitter and uh, Instagram at William the Four, And then they can find me on Facebook with my name, Billy DeVore IV. I had to add the IV because people thought I was my dad and kept adding me. So <laughs> that was rough. Um, and then follow us at the new nasty boys on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Don't go to the Facebook. We don't use it. Um, we basically just use the Instagram. Uh, All about the gram, bro. And subscribe, it. rate, and review to nasty boys as well. Uh, hit them hey, up. Billy, uh, I heard some. Is there a SoundCloud situation? Yeah, you can check out a couple of the tracks on SoundCloud if you want. If oh, you cool. can't wait like, uh, like twenty six hours, but <laughs> there's a few. I had to give them out for for the for the media to listen to, so I put on the just, ones that I like. Just trying to help, man. Billy, I, I appreciate I it. 
thanks no, for hanging okay. out, man. I appreciate you uh, you hopping on the show, man. It was a good time. It's great to see you again. I haven't seen you in ages, man. So it's great to see you. Best of luck with the album and uh, best of luck trying to do comedy under quarantine. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I'd love to have you guys. I'd love to for you have you guys on the new Nasty Boys. Let's do it. I'm in. Uh, Let's do I'm it. In. Uh, 82 games really. or whatever they play, I'm in. Drew oh, would pretend to like yeah. baseball for that. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. See, he again, remember, this year I said I was going to go all in on baseball. That's true. You I were, said I was uh, going to lean into it. Then the world so got canceled. Knew, nah, he knew this was coming. Then it was a setup. He's like, I'm going all in on baseball. There's about to be a pandemic. Oh, darn. I can't. Shoot. Golly gee. Although the Korean League's playing. You've been watching those highlights? Yeah, they're all right. It's all right. Dude, they, hey, they, bla- they bat flip with the best of them. That's true. The bat Thank flips are that. fantastic. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Craft Beast Sports. Subscribe to the YouTube. Subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Shout out 12 Ounce Sports for uh, hanging out with us as well. Thank you guys for sharing the show. You guys all be good. Thanks. Cheers. Peace. We out. Bye.